and then we see that kind of person in the world. I'll put it five in the first place. Life is simple for me. So, when I'm a graduate of a couple of things philosophy, education, law, and I also read an education that I've had. Uh, uh, I came from a trip to go view the Cabin Coast. for this office and what are your aims of becoming the next governor of Anambra State? Yeah, well, Africa has done well. Fundamentally, Africa has captured the desire of Igbo people to define themselves with the idea. The first thing that I would do as governor is to make the people of Anambra State understand that they have a right to demand accountability from every officer of government. Well, my wife mm. is one of the, I call her the gift of my life. Yeah. She's an enable, amazing, loving woman. Yeah. So I will expect that she will be an exemplary mother. Okay. Exemplary mother. So her influence will be on her nature. If, for example, Sonudo has a political strategy, of saying, hey guys, this thing, hey, all of you, go, go, go. The thing has been given to me, and he comes in front of the building and stands there. I say, hey, stop, where are you going? He say, you want to be governor? No, not here now. They gave me this thing four years ago, and he convinces me, and you come back, and you start complaining. The problem is not caused by you, it's caused by you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because which guy go back? This thing doesn't belong to you. How can they give it to you? It belongs to God now. Don't you know? Even our governor knows, Mother Abroach is his name. Yes. And then he's. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying to intimidate you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like to. Professor of Economics, I like to. Be <laughs> professor of Intimidation. <laughs> Talk show. My name is Honorable Nigel Bonejeku, the presenter of TV program. In this edition, we present an evil leader. He is a strategic and conflict resolution consultant who have served as the special advisor of technical matters to President Goodluck Jonathan, Chief Akachuku Soleva. So you are welcome to this program. It's a privilege having you to be part of this program. And also, we heard that you are coming out as a governorship election under the from Africa or to receive grand alliance. So could you brief our viewers on the brief introduction how it serves? Okay. My name is Nizaka Kosoli Wangwanko. I'll put it five in the first letter. Life is simple for me. So, when I'm a graduate of a couple of philosophy, education, law, and I also read an education that I've had. Uh, uh, I came from a trip to go to the Cabin Coast. And then moved on to become a philosopher. I got married, five kids, and uh, five grandchildren. So, life for me is just about being your neighbor. Okay. Yeah. You know, being a neighbor to the rest of the people. Yeah. And uh, whatever it is you think you know, you must have the humility to let others make suggestions. And then the conviction where you find the solution is to do it. Wow. So that's why I am. Yeah. 
That was a good one, sir. Uh, all Progressive Grand Alliance is your political party. And uh, every incumbent party seek for continuity in every upcoming election. What makes you the best candidate for this office? And what are your aims of becoming the next governor of Anambra State? Okay, well, Africa has done well. Fundamentally, Africa has captured the desire of Igbo people to define themselves within Nigeria. So it's a very unique addition that Africa has made. Okay. In, in, in positioning themselves as a party that defines Igbo people, yeah. they have lost stability to Anambra State for the past 15 years. Yeah. And if you drive around Anambra State, you go to any part of Nigeria, okay. except the major urban cities that all the federal resources are used to develop. If you go around Nigeria, and the states that were as long as uh, Africa when we started, we will find that uh, Anambra is greatly developed. Okay. Uh, they, 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 they question the size and uh, the robustness of the roads, but they are pretty connected. Wow. You know? uh, and uh, you can see that uh, the civil service of Anambra is becoming very stable. And Anambra knows what they lack or what they want in security because the government of uh, Africa has defined it. Okay. Right. So, yes. uh, for me, therefore, it's a party that has a future in Anambra State. And why do I think I should take help take that future forward? I come from versatile experience, okay. you know, uh, from serving uh, from the local government level to the state level, from state level to regional level, from regional level. To the federal level. I've served at various cadres of administration in Nigeria. Mm. And so I understand what you need to do mm. if you are in contact with the federation. You how do you focus to get what belongs to you back to the state? Mm. Uh, I understand the challenges of regional integration. How do you relate with other Igbo people across the country? Okay. And how do you relate with other tribes so that they don't take Igbos for granted? I have a deep understanding of that. Wow. And then when you come into Anambra State, I understand the talent, the talent pool. So the, the, great, the greatness of Anambra State is not in its land mass. Okay. It's in its people, her people. The people of Anambra State are highly gifted. They are great industrialists, they are good people, they are brilliant people, and they are people that are sad themselves. So I understand that part. And that's why I call myself a facilitator. Because you don't you can't you don't go for Anambra. You don't you don't run in front of them. Anambra people are not people you play kings for. Okay. You know, ride big cars, you know, because they have a sense of it. Wow. So, and it's not an Anambra people need someone who has the common sense to become smaller so that they can grow bigger. Yeah. And that's what the governor of Anambra state should be. He's someone that can blend with every level, who can see the big and give them the space to play big. Okay. Who can see those who are growing up and allow them to grow. And who can see that in the pool of young people milling around, there's a huge sea of talent that needs to be promoted, enhanced, and respected. Okay. Uh, so, Anambra is not the, the lateral society. Okay. You know, in the sense that it doesn't have flats, you know, flat classes. Anambra is a horizontal society. People just go boom from below, you can get to the top. Okay. Uh, somebody you see today as uh, maybe, a, let's take the driver that brought you here. Hmm? Yeah. And if it, mm. this same guy mm. can tomorrow become the biggest millionaire in your town. Yeah. So so when you see him driving you, mm. if you realize that you give him the respect yeah. that you give his boss. Yeah. Because tomorrow, in an ambassador, this same guy can transform into anything. Yes. So that's what is important in and that's this understanding. Mm. And the fact that I do realize that Anambra is a Christian community. Yeah. And therefore, God has to play at the center of everything. And do he wants to recognize that God is at the center of everything, then it comes to humility. Okay. Because God, when God is in charge, every man is weak. Okay. And once you realize that, then you go with it. So, with these dispositions, I feel that if it's the will of God, yeah. Then I'm quite positioned to help to take an to this next step. Okay. That was a nice one, my excellence. But if and when elected as the governor of Anambra State, 
What do you intend to achieve within five, six months in your office? Well, the if, I would always like you to add if it's the will of God. Okay. And because once you take God out, I don't know which, yes. I don't know, you would have said to be an elected. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they will have to defer to God. They have to defer to God. Yeah. Okay, for me, the first six months of governorship mm. will be focused on confidence building. I need to get a number of people to believe that we are in for a new and good start. Yeah. Right, so the first six months is to look at what we currently have. I'm not going to do anything new. First six months are talking about, I will look at what we have today. Yeah. And get them to work. Mm. So I will look at the roads and the roads that are already built, the ones that have potholes and all those stuff. And yeah. clean it up. Okay. Right? I clean yeah. up the gutters, make sure the water is flowing. Okay. So my first effort will be to get what all the predecessors have done that are within my control to do what? Make them work. And then get the people to, to believe in order. So regulation. If you make this road work, how do you keep it working? Working. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What is your role as citizen yeah. in making sure that what government brings into your community works? Okay. So the first six months is to stabilize everything my predecessors have done, evaluate them, find the ones that are working, find the ones that have become totally useless. Then we say these ones are no longer working. Maybe they are outdated or something is wrong and we cannot look at you to pass this one. We collapse it. Oh, hmm? yeah. Then when I say, okay, these ones are important, we make them work. And then we sit down with everybody and say, guys, if we have to have good government, yeah. then the people at the government must have the same definition of good government. Okay. So I will define it, I set the rules, I get understanding. Yeah. So it's people engagement, moving around, yeah. sharing vision, yeah. sharing spaces, yeah. defining the rules, yeah. reorganizing the place, yeah. putting order, building statistics, yeah. laying the foundation wow. for the great things that we have to move to. Because we can't move to it alone. Okay. And as governor, I will want to see when I enter a street in another state, people are coming out and joining you, moving through their That's streets. Right with want and love and understanding, knowing that what you're doing is for their own good. Okay. I would hate to walk around with police as government. Okay. I like to pop into people's homes yeah. and discuss why is your path leaking. Yeah. Take you behind your house. Why is this thing torn away? And the, 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 the refuse in your house yeah. and bad water in your house is pouring into other people's homes. Yeah. What can we do about it? Yeah. How do we fix these standards? Why is it that your daughter is the, the, the internal gutter is broken and it's flowing through another person's wall. So I want to have those kind of conversations with the first six months. Yeah. Oh, that's great. You are a living example because uh, coming straight to your house was so easy. Like, uh, though we have an appointment, uh, but the way uh, your security welcome us is a real example of what you just said now. Thank you. So Thank it's, you. it's something encouraging. So we get to the next question. The challenge of budget in Nigeria has been that of management of resources and not the availability of resources. And the country revenue is dwindling as a result of COVID-19 epidemic and other issues affecting international business leading to a drop in federal allocation accruable to the state. What are your plans to show up or increase the IGR of the states in order to reduce dependence on federal allocation if you become a governor? Okay, well, uh, first of all, the, the, the problem of managing the budget in Nigeria today stems from two angles. You see, essentially, accountability. People are not demanding for accounts. So, the first thing that I would do as governor is to make the people of Anambra State understand that they have a right to demand accountability from every officer of government, including myself. So the public account, the public asset of Anambra State will be transparent. Okay. You can see what we have and what we are doing with it. And you have a right, the freedom of for information bill 
that Nigeria passed, Anambra State people will have first hand and active contact with the power of that bill. Okay. So, first is information availability. So, once you've done that, mm -hmm. the next thing is Anambra State is way beyond federal allocation. Mm -hmm. It is really something that I don't think about because I look at the great potential of Anambra State. So, the first thing I would do as governor to improve revenue in Anambra State is to redesign the capitalization of the state by introducing strict domestic savings mm -hmm. as part of capital development. Okay. Now, what that means is that I'll have to get every Anambrian to understand that the money you save, we can borrow it and grow the state. So, from the age of 10, it will become mandatory under my government that every Anambra person from the age of 10 has a savings account. So, everybody will have a savings account. And I will expect that in that savings account, you will save and invest 500 naira every month. Now, save and invest within a cycle of 10 years. So, you, you, you invest, save and invest 500 naira a month, mm -hmm. which you can exit at the end of 10 years. So, every 10 years, you have the opportunity to exit from that cycle. Now, what that does is that we create a domestic pool of money that automatically is available, right? Uh -huh. So with that domestic pool of money, we can then go back to look at our families. That's why my slogan says, Anambra families first. Wow. Now, the Anambra family is the base of innovation. It is the father and the mother and their child at home that you have to help to develop the potentials of their family so that they can build that enterprise that you can tax. If in the home, the father and mother does not realize that, oh, this young man is a, has good skill with his hand, and all he needs when he's in secondary school is a camera, and the camera is worth maybe 200,000 naira. And if you put this camera in the hands of this kid, and you encourage the kid to take photographs, right, yeah. then you're going to give birth to a huge movie maker. Okay. So those talents, those abilities to build up small, medium and small scale enterprises across the state, driven by the commitment of families to development, to investment, to savings and to production mm. is the first line. Okay. Once you have that going, then the revenue will come because you see, you can't be talking of revenue when there's no enterprise. Then once the middle class begins to flow, they, they are able to then create the market for big industry because they, they have money to spend and then you have the great uh, opportunity for that and that takes us to the next level of industrialization okay. so we can roll to industrialization through two, two corridors yeah. the first corridor is power and Ambra must have electricity for 24 hours we can't continue to live like that we must break the backbone of lack of power. Yeah. And you can't do that if you don't have gas yeah. flowing into an Anambra State. Yeah. So we have to get gas into an Anambra State. Okay. So I have a gas strategy for Anambra an State. And then once you've got gas in, yeah. you have to decide on opening up the flow, you see the, the routes that go in and out of an Anambra State. So there are certain dual carriageways you must create. You know, there are definite opportunities in Alambra State for this dual carriage place. Yeah. You have, for example, Rotary Junction to Oga. Okay. It's an open corridor of talking to Newi, around where the, the um, uh, where Newi is, or is yeah. his palace, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the Nobu Maigi Igwene Joka. So around his palace. Yeah. You know, that road that cross, cross there moves on up, up, up to Oga. Yeah. Now, that's a federal corridor. But it has a capacity for dual carriage as a state facility for entire entire dual carriage yeah. So you need to explore such federal highways. There are about five of them, and they, they, you can cut through them and create dual double lanes so that vehicles can go into Anambra State freely. Okay. Big trucks, you know, facilities, and then people can now open up production centers and clusters around where you really have space. Yeah, and you can use that corridor to pipe gas which gets them to be able to power their facilities. Mm. 
The next thing, once you have that worked out, then you must provide meter, meter yeah. for electricity. Okay. So that people can pay their bills. Mm. Yeah, unless people pay for electricity, you cannot have to draw hours mm. So you need to make it real. For me as governor, I'm going to invest first time, push grant for the production of uh, the prepaid meters. Okay. Within a number state. So every room will have a prepared meter. Mm. Mm? So once you have a prepared meter, anything that connects to the electric pole will have a prepared meter. Then that means that every time you have light, that means you've paid for it. Because you pay in advance. And once that payment starts going in, then electric companies can come. Because they know that when they invest in power generation, they'll get their money back. Yep. So I'll create a power economy that works. Then attract investors in electricity. Who can come and give up to four hours life? The next thing is water. Water should not be a lake, you know, some, some, uh, uh, something for the rich who have boreholes in their houses. We need to deal with water availability. So once you have water and power, you have created the two basic elements that help you to go through the roads you have opened up to big industrialized world. Yeah. So next level, once you go to that level, you go to large scale fund. That's where you get the big tax break. That start getting for the big companies. Okay. So that's my own thing. Okay, that's what's good. And uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the governor of uh, Anambra State, uh, Chief Willie Obiano, has been doing a great job so far because uh, uh, this water corporation has been invested uh, some. Uh, a large uh, budget on it in trying to reactivate the old Anambra water, water facilities, water facilities. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, with the kind of uh, um, vision you have coming in and boost it more. I think it will make Anambra state everybody have availability for this water, water yes. and yeah. the water has to be paid for too. Yeah, yeah, mm. okay. Thank you, Excellency. What plan do you have to tackle concerning use unemployment to reduce? Restiveness and social vice, vices are among us the youth. Well, okay, for, for me, the, this youth issue, yeah, uh, it's, it's a topic that I have tried to deal with with a lot of young people that I date. Mm. Uh, the first thing that we have to do with our youths in Anambra State mm. is to get them ready for work. Okay. Right, you see, if you can employ young people. Everybody that has employed people around Anambra State complain mm. about the quality of workforce. Yeah. So my first work, first thing as governor, is to sit down with our youths. I'm going to be, you know, I'm a youth friendly person, yeah. but I don't bullshit with youth. Yeah. I don't think that if you don't make yourself available and ready to work, that I have a responsibility to not take care of you. So there, it has to be a balanced thing. So my first thing would be to get the Anambra youths to be ready for work. work. So I'll do evaluation of the youth competencies, all the from different classes, what skills do you have? Mm -hmm. And then create clear interventions mm -hmm. to make sure that the skill gap that we notice are addressed. The ones that will, with good skills will, can easily fit into family enterprises okay. that we're already promoting. Because you see, we're going to promote family enterprises. So when we promote and support family enterprises, it is always better to get these young people to vision within their family business, yes. right? Yeah. And become part of what their parents are doing. Yeah. And then they are able to push the family vision a little bit further. But as we are getting them into the family businesses and encouraging them, especially those who are educated but not their parents are not educated you know people with that kind of variance yeah. uh, or you are educated your parents do not business and uh, you have business idea so we create the linkages to get them to first maximize their immediate home potential oh. now with that involvement i think we we'll reduce the number of the unemployed in the street then the ones that are left when i see okay those who are willing to work within the government systems yeah. i will re uh, there's something that we are not did in the number of SAs and things yeah. that seems to be is to me is a good idea yeah and i'm going to do it further i'm going to drill it down okay. so that you get in every political world yeah. i'm going to have a idea 
Now, but that EA is not just going to go into the hanging around. Because yeah. I have a lot of work for him. Yeah. I need to know what's happening to the local hospital. I need to know what's happening in the local market. I need to know what happened today with crime. I need to know what happened in neighborhood management. Yeah. I need to know what happened with the facilities. What you know, all the elements of government. I must have a weekly report, okay. detail from the guy. Mm. So as I go into hold my weekly executive council meeting, mm. this information coming from the base mm. of the community, mm. brought home by my executive assistants that are distributed in all the political worlds, mm. will help me to view into the state and understand what's going on. Yeah. Right? So those kind of uh, initiatives will be promoted across states, time, local government, as territorial zone, all that stuff. So we're going to cadre the people so that the, I will, the government will have a great plug-in into the society. Mm -hmm. Now, these people will be young people, and so we see that a lot of employment can come from that. We will then pro also promote incentives. There are a couple of government entities that are already created that focus on investment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to expand access to capital in that area so that the medium and small scale level are expanded. Once you expand that, it takes more people. Yeah. There's also something we should do digital. Okay. You see, by creating opportunity for people to understand the digital space and taking advantage of the traveling capacity of their number of people, mm. we should be able to build support manpower at home for our people abroad. Okay. Now, that means you have to train good keyboard hands. Mm. Right? Yes. Uh -huh. Those who are good in data science, yeah. right? Yeah. You have to train language competencies yeah. so that you have a lot of Anambra who can speak Chinese, for example. Yeah. So if you are in China doing business, you have an, an Ambrosian secretary at home yes. who is able to type your Chinese letters, yeah. do all the stuff and send it to you. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, and that means then we have to make sure that for the digital world to be effective within Anambra State, we have to expand access to the internet. Wow. So we work with you know communication companies and make sure that the internet cover over yeah. a number of states is effective. Yeah. Once that is effective, then we we'll drill up access to it, yeah. and that plugs directly into the availability of international airport that oh. our governor has built. Oh. So it is a huge thing that can manage the employment issues. But you see, before you can step into it, there's a skills gap mm -hmm. that we have to fill. There's a a gap for you know people knowing more that yeah. we need to fill. Okay, that will be a good one, Excellency. Mm -hmm. Do you have a comprehensive health policy for our people, and how would you enforce the health insurance coverage for majority of our people? Okay, well, you see, the issue of health, mm -hmm. I believe more that we should have preventive medical, much more mm -hmm. than curative medical. Oh. So my intervention will be at the primary health level. Okay. So I'll pay very aggressive attention to the primary health sector. Okay. Now, that means sanitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means information about what you need to do to move away from getting infected by disease. Okay. That means nutrition, what you eat. Mm -hmm. That means open spaces for exercise. So we need to be sure that in every community, there's a place people exercise. Mm. Football pitches, you know, to run tennis places, running spaces. Mm. And you also make sure that around the streets, there are walk walkways where old people can walk. Mm. If you come along this area now, you can't find where an old person will walk. You will use bike and kill it. Yeah. So there's no secreted walk routes where old people can get up and walk. Take a walk, which is good for health. So the, the reorganizing the the, the the primary health care level for people to understand that good health is environment based. Okay. Right? Yeah. That you have to keep clean, you have to organize open spaces, you know, you have to have fresh air, air quality, things like that are the things that you need to discuss. So it's not only it's only it's not only a provision of center uh, but awareness, awareness, the type of food people eat. Yeah. You know, there's too much junking. We we should restore more confidence in our local food. 
You know, the elite's arrogance has permeated our population. So if you go and pour a bit of uh, plastic looking things you call spaghetti into a plate, people feel, ah, this one is special, I mean, Dutch or something, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. When you would have really sat down and enjoyed uh, a very nice offense salad with, uh, with uh, Need just or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, so, so you find that now we need to have confidence okay. in our local cuisine. Okay. And get, because that helps our people to eat more healthy meals. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, have less impact of disease. Once that is uh, gotten through, then we'll go to specialization. Okay. And in this regard, for us to succeed in our Medicare in our state, we must link with our brothers overseas. We have a whole pool of very brilliant medical officers of Anambra origin distributed across the world. Yeah. So it's, an, it's a combination of mid-level skills, mm -hmm. uh, having uh, nurses, technicians, you know, lab attendants, all the people who can diagnose the disease. Okay. So we must train for disease analysis okay. yeah, and for rendering a medical instruction. Yeah. Then you now put high scale technology to connect you to our boys overseas. So they are able to intervene remotely. And once they have intervened, they can ask for analysis. And the analysis is correct. Okay. Then a doctor in the US can look at you and say, ah, let me see the, the analysis. Mm -hmm. Then at home, they will treat us. Okay. So no big deal. You should have, if there is a direct intervention required for operation, for surgery, or for complex handling, you yeah. build that special asset yeah. But in between that, you put well-trained nurses, you know, uh, lab technologies, all those people mm. with proper equipment distributed at the primary health level. Yeah. So they are connected to our experts overseas, yeah. who then can deal with intervention. Yes, yeah. And when it's big, you go to the specialized hospital and treat. Wow. So that kind of uh, combination is what I'm taking. Yeah, it's a good point. And once you do that, then you can now bring in uh, insurance people and all that stuff. I'm not, as governor, I will, I'm not going to be the person paying the insurance. Okay. Uh, but I'll promote that people okay. pay. Okay. I'll make sure that they're not duped. Okay. <laughs> but I'll make sure that they, they don't uh, eat stuff. That <laughs> all right, so well, I want to do a good one. Uh, uh, will you, um, my number of states, is an agrarian state. What plans do you have to harness the agricultural resources with the view to repositioning the state as a major player in sustainable food production and sufficient local and international? Okay, I, I don't want to deceive myself into saying that Anambra State is agrarian. Yeah. I'm not sure I agree with that. Right. I don't think so. Hmm? Uh, so for me, I don't think that I have not seen a lot of Anambra farmers. Uh, so I would rather encourage Anambra people to go to food processing. Okay. So I would like to see us as a food processing zone. Mm. So I will push for food processing. Yeah. But there will be big agri players, you know, like we have some open spaces in Anambra North mm. and some parts of Anambra State where you have large land. Yeah. And therefore, you can allow, you can work with big farmers mm -hmm. who have mechanized facilities to come in and pick up, you know, things that can give us uh, revenue. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I would rather that I have a farmer who plants roses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And beautiful roses, which they can cut and put it, bring to the international airport and fly to Japan and other places where they, I would rather have those kind of farmers who do things that give me. Uh, tax mm -hmm. yep. while the rest are in food processing. So we go into partnership with our neighboring states. I can go to a boy. They have farmers who are serious, who are committed to farming. Yep. So I can then sit down with a boy in state, for example, mm -hmm. and go into uh, an exchange agreement so that the farmers are contracted to my food processors. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you produce cassava, you don't have to carry it on your head and you looking for whom to buy it because an Anambra State Food Processing Unit will buy your cassava. So we'll sign the agreement and I'll back it up with some insurance so that you are sure that once you bring this cassava up, it's coming straight to Anambra State. And we can buy the whole lot and then come here and have a garret processing plant. 
so that that dairy processing plant can package the dairy and then bring it back to people who want it, right? Mm -hmm. I'd rather, you know, do that as governor than start convincing the Sanambra people that I see that farming is the thing. Well, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll promote big, big farming. Mm -hmm. Big farming for cash crop, right? Mm -hmm. But food processing for feeding us. With partnership with states that are around us that have committed farmers. Okay. That would be my approach. Okay. But are you impressed so far that uh, the Ministry of Agriculture have done in Obia North um, administration? Because to the best of my knowledge, uh, Coscheris has a very massive uh, rice plant in Anambra State. Yeah, that's the same, that's basically the same concept. You know, mm. uh, the governor has focused on big farmers who produce their yeah, food that they can sell to us, but food they can export. Okay. Right to other areas. Okay. So so big farmers will produce for large markets beyond that state. And I want them to produce things that can move quickly yeah. so that I can tax them. Okay. I'm going to make it for my state. I understand. That is what I'm interested <laughs> in. I understand. <laughs> but, I understand. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, for the feeding, Mm. There is, uh, you know, all right. Mm. If you look at, you can see the food. Yes. So what I need to do is to arrange, yeah. you know, reliable relationship between the farmers in those committed, you know, small scale farming units, yeah. you know, mm. and then they feed our food processing industry. Yeah, I think yeah. we should be big in food processing. I get it. Mm. I get it. Yeah. So how would you make the state a sector? of excellence for the higher education as most of our people send their children to private universities in Southwest. Okay, for me, there are two challenges you have with sending children out. Yeah. One is parents sometimes are worried mm. about the moral rectitude of the environment. Okay. So I'm going to be promoting much more uh, the, the discussion between parents and churches with regard to quality of schools. So I'm going to drive more participation of moral centers in the development of schools right up to the university level. So I want to see that kind of thing. But the challenge I, I think we have with our education is that our education is too literate. Too literate, you know? Literacy. The ability to read and write, speak English, talk long sentences, things like that. Yeah? Our education is too literate. Okay. It is not numerate. Now, numeracy is the ability to manage time and space and dimension. Right? Which is predominant science. Now, our education is not numerate. So once we go to our schools, after going to school, they are not able to do any specific thing. Okay. They have no capacity to manage something, you know, create something, cut something. Make if you ask him to cut a square. They will cut it that it will look like a hexagon. Right? Yeah. So we need to train our people to be able to do stuff. Now, so numeracy is the ability to manage time, space, dimension, relationships. 90% of our problem is coming from there. So I will therefore readjust the curriculum of the space. To make it numeracy intensive. Mm. And I'm also going to push for FIDO centers, FIDO centers. I call them FIDO, FIDO centers. Mm. Now, these FIDO centers are places where children can actually play. Mm. Right? So yeah. if you come to my door, I have a FIDO center. Mm. You, can, you can play with the camera. Right? Mm. A child can be allowed to FIDO with something, play. You know, when we were young, we used to build the house with sand, do things, you know, all those things that they used to do, develop the child. Mm. But you see, most kids now don't have a place where they can feed them, where they can be children, where they can climb things and fall down without breaking their distance, and where they can learn to build something with stick. That's numerous. And when you don't develop the ability of the child to feed them, you limit the child's ability to manage space and time. Wow. So that is what I'll do with our education. Once we do that, 
they will begin to recognize the talents. And they will specialize in funding those talents and promoting them and giving them awards and sending them scholarships and special exposures and things like that. That was a good one. Uh, uh, the way the idea was packed to me, I never thought of that before. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it was a, it's a, it's an amazing one. <laughs> so we move on to the next question, Excellency. Yes. Will you be willing to allocate a minister to your deputy for supervision to get him or her more involved if elected? Well, I have never been able to understand. Yes, the position of a deputy governor yeah. and the governor, vice president or president. In that room, I was, when, when I, I was with Bruno, I sat with him in the vice president's office. Yes. And we were having quite a lot of problems. Yeah. Because we needed to people at a point he has to ask me this who's it, how do we look at look around the world? Vice presidents, how are they treated all over the world? Yeah. And I had to do a study across the world, America, everywhere I looked at. And the, the job of the vice president is like a non existent job. Yes. It's just there. Yeah. It's, a, it's there, but it's not there. Yeah. And deputy governors have so I served a man who was a deputy governor, mm. then became a president. Vice President mm. became a, a deputy governor, became a governor. Yeah. Mm? Vice President became a president. Yeah. The first, the only man in the history of Nigeria who transited that. And across so many political systems of the world, yeah. the only man who was deputy governor, mm. governor, yeah. vice president, yeah. president. So yeah. I understand what these people go through. Yeah. These deputy governors and vice president, what they go through. Yeah. I understand that. Mm. For me, my deputy governor is going to be my deputy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. My deputy governor is going to be, I'm not going to say cover out this space for my deputy governor. Yeah. I'm going to really make him a deputy governor. Okay. Because he will understand what I am doing. Okay. And will flow with me in the job. Okay. So you will find that whoever that is going to be my deputy governor, whoever that God wills to be my deputy governor, yeah. As long as he understands mm. at every moment in time yeah. that a deputy governor is a heartbeat away from the government. Oh. And the only way he can continue to be a deputy governor is that the heart, which is the governor, must be pounding. Now, if the deputy governor wants to stop the heart, yeah. then it's not a good thing. Yes. So people are afraid of the deputy governor trying to stop the governor's heart. Mm. And therefore, they try to freeze the deputy governor. Yeah. That that interface between the governor and the deputy governor mm. is a support system of for one another. But it's also a dangerous play. So the character of the deputy governor must encourage the governor mm. to treat the deputy governor as his first assistant. Wow. Right? Because yeah. the deputy governor is the governor's first assistant. Yes. Mm. Mm. So it is. It, that's why you don't have the rule for the deputy governor specifically, except some small rules like in the, in the state, it's usually the manager of the local government mm. and all that stuff. Mm. But you see, I'm going to put a lot in the local government. Okay. So my deputy governor will have his hands full in driving my vision for the local community. Uh, that would be great. So he's my first assistant. I'm not going to carry any special role for him. But he's, he's essentially too full, okay. working just by me. Okay. Yeah. That was a good one. So we have a 10 minutes break and when we're back, we'll continue the last phase of the program. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the program. Excellency, uh, this is the final phase of this program. We're so impressed for so far you have uh, answered and the kind of vision you have for people of Anambra State. But uh, the way insecurity is moving around the state now, what will be your relationship with IPO, Masob, and other separatists since insecurity have become a serious challenge facing the state now? Well, okay, look, let's take the truth. We we'll have insecurity, yeah. and we we'll have people who are angry with the way Nigeria is treating us. Yeah. And just like most people, people in different parts of the country are unhappy yeah. with the way the Federation of Nigeria is doing stuff. Okay. 
So we have our brothers who think that they are tired and they want to fight. And you have those of us who are saying, no, 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 not that way, right? Let's engage. But this is an ongoing discussion and there is something that cost it. So, but when we come back to the issue of security, for me, when you talk about security, and you look at security in three different ways. Okay. I have the person I call an unarmed criminal. Okay. Unarmed criminal. Hmm? You have armed criminal. Okay. And you have corrupt criminal. Corruption. Yeah. So you have corruption, armed criminal, and unarmed criminal. Now, these three persons have problem. Yes. They create problem. Yes. Right? Yes. One can lead to the other. Uh, and unarmed criminal, for example, the people you call for one night. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Now the guy can come and tell you a good story. And you trust him and you give him everything you have. Yeah. And you don't disappear with it. Yeah. And you get frustrated. Yeah. And you call him and cut off his phone. Every other thing, you can't reach him anymore. And then you see him on the street, one day in the street, driving a brand new car and feeling nice on your money. Yeah. Now you lose your mind. The thing can transmit from an armed criminal situation to an armed criminal. Yeah. Right? Okay. So that one is something that we will deal with a different way. We have a lot of other situation. We get people to understand transactions. We get people to do contracting, and it's part of numerous, right? Yeah. It, it, common sense things. Mm -hmm. So we train our people to be able to know this, not to go into this, and how to respond. But the armed criminal is that guy who intentionally, from his house, picks up a weapon of any sort. Be it a chemical. Uh, uh, an iron element, a gun, anything that is injurious or fatal to a human being, and takes it from his house with an intention to use it on you in order to obtain an undue advantage over you. That person is an armed criminal and is the source of the greatest source of insecurity. Now, the armed criminal, I have a simple solution for the armed criminal counter force so i have to design my state and work in my state that i know the location speed and capacity of every armed criminal that enters my environment so when i become governor an Ambra state will have sufficient intelligence in it to identify internally existing armed criminals and in causing wars, the wars coming from outside. My response to the armed criminal is simple. Yeah. Drop your weapon. Three times, drop your weapon. If you don't drop your weapon, we visit you with unrelenting fatal force. Simple. So an Empire state should be a state where armed criminals will be top scared to get involved in. Then corrupt criminals. That one is also land other issue. That one society stops celebrating distortion. You find somebody with a local government chairman today. After two months, he starts to do things that there is no way his pay and even the goodwill attracted to his office can generate those things. And the society told them and celebrate him. So for me, it will be more to educate the society to reject the corrupt. That would be my approach. So these three things yeah. are basically. But with regard to organizations all over the country yeah. that are battling the inefficiency of Nigeria, mm -hmm. that is a national problem. I don't think I have a governor's position on how to resolve an issue of IPOP and all these people. This is a national discussion. We should be and hold a meeting at the national field and, and discuss it. Uh, if if I have somebody who is in my state and who insists that he's an iPod person, uh, I will be talking to the federation mm, to let us discuss what this guy is talking about. Right? And I will also be talking to him in a brotherly way. Let us have a conference and see whether we can uh, 
find a way around it. So my own is to gain the confidence of the angry people so that they don't do tremendous damage to the entire system. While at the same time, getting the Federation to see that there's something to talk about. We cannot pretend that this doesn't exist. Okay. Yes, that would be my idea. Okay, thank you, Excellency. Then uh, Onisha and uh, Newi Town at the Anambra Revenue Hall. Do you think they have gotten, these two towns, do you think they have gotten what they deserve when it comes to infrastructure and the development? Well, I think they could do better. They are, they, these towns should do much, much better than they are doing. Yeah. But you also know that these towns have also behaviors that make it even more difficult for what they want to be done. If, for example, you drive through a typical one uh, way road on a normal day, you will see that the traders are always trying to come to the middle of the road to trade. Now, that's a, a behavior, you know? Uh -huh. That's a behavior that does not encourage development. Mm -hmm. So, if you come as a governor uh, and you want them to you want to widen the road, right? So that the road will look like an endowed highway, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You are going to have a lot of fights. With these guys, so we need to sit down. We say, "No, we are not the chap people." I say, "Okay, guys, what do you want this name to look like?" Everybody, sit down. So I bring a model. I will bring models. Yeah. This is one model of name or the motorcycle in the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. Is this what we want? Mm -hmm. So we can close this road. I say, "This particular road is motorcycle road. No car." Mm -hmm. Yeah. We block it. If we have more to don't pass the side. Right? Okay. So we know that once you want to go this part of the market, mm -hmm. this part of the mm -hmm. you can only drive bike mm -hmm. on this side. This side is walking with leg. Mm -hmm. No bike should come there. Yeah? Yeah. This side is moto. Mm -hmm. This side is moto plus bike plus leg. You know? So you need to agree those things. Yeah. And then once you agree it, and the many people agree and sign it. Then me, my own is to bring the dozer. Mm -hmm. As governor, I said, okay, guys, remember I was in this town in uh, Isukora Navy last week, and all of us agreed that this particular road will now be 10 meter wide. Anybody who has any property within the 10 meter radius will have three days to take it. And when I finish the message, the, the representative of uh, Igbo Nehru will come. Eh? The representative of Usuko and Nehru will come. Yeah. Hmm? The representative of the market people will come. Make this announcement. Then on that particular day, His Excellency, is the Akaji Mungo, we don't die. I say, guys, game on. Mm How -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you doing? So these towns require collaboration. Yeah. You need the people to appreciate what needs to be done, and you need the will for the community and government to get it done. Yeah, that was a good one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, how influential will your wife be in the government as the first lady of the state? Well, my wife mm. is one of the... I call her the gift of my life. Yeah. She's an amiable, amazing, loving woman. Yeah. So I would expect that she will be an exemplary mother Example of So her influence will be on her virtue. The respect yeah. that she brings to the people of Anambra State. Yeah. The way she treats other women with dignity and honor. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. the, 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 the way she conducts herself in the respect she brings to my home and to my work. So for me, the first lady will be very influential in that sense. Because the love and the embellishment, the beauty, the glamour, the, the, the joy, the prayerfulness, the affection she will bring will melt anybody. Wow. That's the kind of uh, influence I respect. Wow, that's very good. <laughs> that's a good one. And we hope to see such mother. 
the, the first lady of our state. It will be encouraging to all the mothers of the state. Yes. Okay, what is your opinion on uh, Anambra Airport being constru uh, constructed by this current administration? Well, I describe that job as bold. You see, what Odela has done mm. is to move Anambra State to where it ought to be. Anambra should be a state that deals with bold things. Yeah. Bold. So the Anambra Umbo International Airport, uh, International Cargo and Passenger Airport, done by our governor, is a bold endeavor. Right? It is strategic because it's futuristic. Right? Yeah. It's a regional airport that ought to, you know, encompass wider than Anambra State for it to be really, really, you know, um, uh, maintainable. So for me, I think that what uh, the government has done is to invite the region to meet Anambra in the future in that international airport. So it's a big thing. It is, it's a bold step towards saying, okay guys, we are done with what old projects. Let's move on now and meet the world. So it's bold. I, I love it. And um, uh, I look forward to making it magnificent. Okay. That's good. Okay, other parties, other political parties strongly believe that Apuga can go again 21 over 21. Do you still have confidence that Apuga can achieve such again this time around? If not, is there any challenges the party is facing now? E.g., uh, for example, we heard about uh, imposition, uh, so called cabals that Tami, whoever they want, and the way the party is conducting uh, the primaries, as in past primaries, wasn't that good because most of the aspirants uh, are aggrieved. Like uh, last primary, uh, we had about uh, Honorable Nsofo that is contesting for federal uh, representative, got shot at the neck and other disqualification that comes with that. But parties still believe with this old executive and uh, and the national chairman that have conducted the last uh, election. So upcoming this election, do you start, uh, still stand confidence that these same people can conduct it well and do it well? Well, OK, if you come to bad uh, behavior of political parties, yeah and uh, bad uh, elections. Uh, Africa is not the worst in an state. Yeah, I know. You know. So we have all these, uh, I mean, come drama. on. Come on, drama <laughs> is part of PDP, ACC. Yeah. Yeah. These are drama people now. Yes. <laughs> they are into it big time. So if you want, if it is what that means, whether Africa will be there or not, yeah. then there is no discussion. Yeah. Because Africa is a, a, a family. Yes. These people are just uh, wild, wild west. Yes. You know, it's yes. a jungle of rich people jumping on top of each other yes. and breaking down their houses. Yes. That one is not part of what we are talking about. Yes. When we talk about after retaining power, yeah. it is based on the connection, the pact, and this connection to the people blood, to the family link. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then, when you talk about the current dialogue between aspirants mm. in Africa, this is the first election in which very determined aspirants yeah. are running in Africa. Yeah. Right? Determined. Yeah. Yeah. So they are not being pushed back. They are not being persuaded to turn back. They are hot on it. And I'm the first line, you know, and the first guy that stayed forward and said, look, this thing ought to be contested for. Right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that doesn't mean that, you know, political strategies will not exist. If, for example, Soludo has a political strategy of saying, hey guys, this thing, hey, all of you, go, go, go. The thing has been given to me. And he comes in front of the building and stands there. I say, hey, stop, where are you going? He say, you want to be governor? No, not here now. They gave me this thing four years ago. And he convinces you and you turn back and you start complaining. The problem is not caused by Soludo, it's caused by you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he put a political strategy. So why are you for that? It's just strategy. 
Yeah. And they plan me, they put large billboards, they put the billboards even in front of governor's office. Anything they like. Just to tell you that look, this deal is done. Yeah. Go back, go back, go back. I yes. believe it. Yes. But if, since we didn't believe it, I said, hey, boy, which guy go back? Yes. This thing doesn't belong to you. How can you give it to you? It belongs to God now. Yes. Don't you know? Even our governor knows, Mother Abrocho is his name. Yes. And there he is. I tell you, come on, stop. Yes. And then you will see that I don't know it's not uh, that reckless. Yes, uh, yes, that he may, he may, uh, I think the, the cause of political discussion, they yes. had some conversations with Solido, yes. which he would like as a gentleman to respect. Mm. Right? Mm. And he's doing his best in doing that. Yeah. He's doing his best. He's calling market people. Come and support Solido. Market people, do they get to vote for the, the delegate election? No. I said, <laughs> Did you see all those market people sitting there saying they support the man? Then you don't run away. That one is, uh, that don't make too much of it. Yeah. It's part of political dialogue. Yeah. It's what makes you excited. Yeah. You know? So stop so complaining about that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Africa is a lovely party. Yeah, it's just for you because a lot of people we are like, why we say, trying to know people's opinion that maybe that. Ticket is already given. No, but to you see, I don't know listening to the party chairman. Yeah. Uh, the party chairman brought a timetable. A timetable. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. That announced the timetable. He's there in the newspaper. The timetable says that on 25th, you will buy nomination form. Yes. And return it before the 8th. Mm. So you have like 10, 12 days yeah. to buy the form. Yes. Now, in May, First day, mm. somebody says, Ah, who hasn't even bought from? He's telling you that I have been given the, the ticket. <laughs> this <is> so <laughs> the funny. Guy, the guy hasn't even. Can't you see that the man has not bought a nomination for? Yes. He mm, just tried to intimidate you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, so oh, good one. The last case. And the man is a professor. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> So we go for the last question. How do you see the future of Anambra State if you win or elected as a governor of Anambra State? Unbelievable future. Yeah. You see, the future of Anambra State is a state where personal success will not be superior to group survivor. I'm looking forward to the Anambra state where personal achievement, personal success will not be superior to group survivor. So Anambrians will find that in their governor, in the government of Anambra state, that finally the essence of group survivor has been captured. Where the essence of group survivor is captured, every individual talent Every individual wealth, every individual success, every ego of an Anambra person will be zeroed in yeah. in building this common ground, this lovely place that all of us can survive together. We do that town. Anambra State will be magnificent. Wow. And I look forward to that future. Wow. Thank you, my SLIC. Thank you. It's the last time <laughs> you. you with you. I hope, I wish you best of luck Thank in the you. primary, upcoming primary election. Yeah. I hope yeah. we will visit you some other time for more interaction. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.